My study is about distance education and language learner autonomy in South Brazil. I developed this study uh, during the master's program at the Federal University of Santa Catarina in South Brazil, in a city called Florianópolis. Uh, I was guided by Professor Celso Henrique Sofen Tumolo, who I would like to thank for uh, advising me throughout this investigation. The objective of this research was to investigate language learner autonomous initiatives through the students' perceptions, particularly in relation to the development of language skills, such as reading, writing, speaking, and listening in the distance teacher education program of offered by the Federal University of Santa Catarina. The specific objectives were to study autonomy characteristics proposed in the literature in order to identify which ones the participants adopted, to find out if autonomous characteristics helped students in developing the four skills in English according to their perceptions and finally to inquire students about their perceptions in relation to autonomous language skills development in a distance education program. The research questions for this investigation were uh, what autonomous initiatives did the students adopt for the development of language skills in English? How did the students perceive their own autonomous initiatives for the development of language skills in English? And what autonomous initiatives helped the students to develop their language skills in the distance education program according to their perceptions? For the review of literature, I discussed about teachers' roles in fostering autonomy, autonomy and language learning distance education, autonomy and self-regulatory learning, autonomy and metacognition, autonomy and learning styles and strategies, autonomy and motivation in language learning. All these topics, I found that they were related to the concept of autonomy in language learning and I discussed about them in the review of literature. But for this presentation, I will concentrate in the concept of autonomy for this study. And in this study, autonomy was conceived as initiatives that learners may present in order to take responsibility for their own learning processes, such as recognizing themselves as responsible for their own learning processes, determining objectives, defining content and progressions, selecting materials for studying, testing themselves, monitoring progress, evaluating progress. All these characteristics or initiatives were stated by Hollett, who, who is an author uh, who first started discussing autonomy specifically in language learning. Autonomous learners acknowledge themselves as responsible for their learning, always depending on collective autonomy, since its absence may limit individual autonomy. Uh, autonomy in this study also <coughs> considers that learners self-regulate their own learning by becoming aware of their learning styles and using appropriate learning strategies to develop language skills in English. Autonomy also implies metacognition in a way that learners are able to evaluate their own co cognitive processes and products. And autonomous learners take a proactive role in their learning processes creating and making use of learning opportunities instead of simply reacting to a stimuli. Autonomy in this, in this study <coughs> does not mean self-study or independent learning, but an autonomous learner might profit from such modes of learning in an autonomous way. Interaction with teachers and peers may foster autonomy and finally, autonomy may be innate, as stated by Paiva, as it also may be developed, as Holek presents. For this, for this study, students answered two questionnaires, one questionnaire about personal information and the second questionnaire 
about autonomy. The concepts of autonomy were used to develop the questions for the questionnaire. They also wrote a one-page reflective report in which they had to uh, talk about their studies in the distance education program, reflecting if they were autonomous or not. And finally, uh, four students were interviewed uh, in order to clarify their answers in the questionnaire and one-page one reflective report. A total of 21 students answered uh, the questionnaires and 20 students wrote the reflective report. From the 21 students, they, they were studied in five different study centers. And here in the table, you have the cities where they were studied. Regarding the autonomy questionnaire, it was possible to find some characteristics of autonomous language learners uh, through participants' perceptions. So here you have three examples of participants who stated that they are responsible for their learning, not the teachers. The teachers are seen as mediators or a facilitator for learning, but not as a person who is responsible for a student's learning, which corresponds to uh, autonomy uh, characteristic. Uh, the same student presented initiatives that indicated both autonomous and non-autonomous characteristics towards learning. For example, participant 2 in statement 3 said that uh, he or she needs someone to evaluate if he is progressing. However, in another statement, statement 5, the same participant stated that he did not need anybody. He has his own ways to test their development or to test if he was progressing or not. From the autonomy questionnaire, it's possible to conclude that autonomy is not a static condition, but a dynamic move that can cont continuously grow or even stop happening, always depending on the students and their decisions regarding learning. And it's unrealistic to identify and list a finite number of characteristics that indicate learner autonomy characteristics over the way each student leads their own learning processes. There is little evidence to suggest that autonomy would consist only of a combination of such characteristics. Regarding the one-page reflective report, most participants see as important the characteristic mentioning the reflective report instruction. They mention examples that characterize autonomous learners, even though there is no way to assure they actu actually use the examples of activities they provided. The reflective report helped collecting more examples of autonomous learners' actions that resemble the ones identified in the review of literature. And it also helped understanding how actions helped students to improve regarding the development of the four skills in English according to their perception. From the interview with the students, it was possible to conclude that they considered necessary looking for extra materials, for example. They provided examples such as movie songs, chats with people from other countries, and video lessons. Three of the four participants exemplified objectives they had regarding their language skills development. And one student saw the program plan as limiting. He did not establish objectives for himself and decided to follow the program guides. The students were able to identify some of their weaknesses and strengths concerning their development in the four skills in English. The four participants recognized the way they progressed in the program concerning the four skills in English. Participants did not disregard the importance of teachers and tutors. 
participants recognize that the program is not the place where the youth excel all they could. And all four students mentioned they recognize their progress as a result from their participation in the program. Answering the questions, the research questions presented in the beginning, uh, the autonomy, autonomy initiatives um, adopted for the development of language skills in English were chatting in English, especially with natives, but also with classmates, reading books, news and information on the internet, watching movies, TV series and documentaries, doing language courses, traveling, writing and creating study and discussion groups among classmates. The students perceived autonomous initiatives as necessary for the development of the four skills in English and all the participants' justifications emphasized that it was necessary to go beyond what the program proposed. Most of the students saw the teacher as a guide and not as someone who was totally responsible for learning development. And uh, throughout the questionnaire, reflective report and interviews, participants provided examples of initiatives they took, such as looking for extra materials, searching for practice opportunities, and setting goals and objectives. All the initiatives students adopted, which were mentioned in research question one, helped students to develop their language skills in the distance education program. This study helped advance knowledge and understanding of the special situation of this group of learners, their actions and initiatives as autonomous distance language learners. It showed distance education students' perceptions on the program, disclosing some of their needs as well as what they brought to the learning process. It also it was also possible to understand learner autonomy in the participants' efforts to learn more and better in a distance program. Here you have the, hef the references used in this presentation. And thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions, comments, please write a message. And I would like to make available my dissertation in case you want to go further into this topic. Thank you.